All right, let's do our third one today. We did three yesterday, three today. Um, just so excited about the results of prosperity and profiting that are going to come forth as we listen to and meditate on these verses and these uh, teachings. Uh, we talked a little bit about our, our verses. Um, I, 1 John 2.27, he teaches us concerning all things. Um, Isaiah 48.17, he teaches us to prosper. 2 Peter 1 and, th 1 and 3, he's given to us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So if you thread those three verses together, um, he teaches you to live out the life of godliness he called you to by showing you how to get everything it takes to do that, whether it be time, talent, treasure, people, places, or things. And, and it all happens at the level you draw close to Christ. And so um, with that said, I want to touch on something today that kind of sounds a little like what we talked about yesterday. Um, yesterday's videos, we started talking about casting the whole of your cares over on the Lord, 1 Peter 5 and 7. We talked about Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom, sowing and reaping. You know, don't take thought for your life. Don't take a, a wrong thought and say it. Oh no, what are we going to do? Oh no, how's that bill going to get paid? Oh no, oh no, oh no. Don't do that because once you take that thought and say it, you own it and you sent it forth like a little soldier in your life. And if that soldier is for the other team, that's not a good thing. <laughs> well, now we're going to talk about 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. For though we walk and live in the flesh, we are not carrying on our own warfare according to the flesh and using mere human weapons. So if you think that your prosperity is just a matter of you working hard, making wise choices, ah, uh, yeah, well, look at Job. I mean, he worked hard and he made wise choices, but he had a spiritual warfare going on in his life, didn't he? And he allowed his heart to get over into fear of losing everything he had. And guess what? The devil obliged. And so the devil saw Job prospering through his wisdom and his working hard and thought, you know what? I could take him down using spiritual invisible weapons, one of which is a spirit of fear. Paul told Timothy, fear is a spirit. He said, we have not been given. That ought to tell you right there that this spirit is given and it ain't given by God. And so stop blaming God for Job's problems. You really can't even make the case that it was the devil. It was Job himself. That and co-parenting with the devil. <laughs> Read just chapters one, two, and three and see if that's not the case. Job 3.25, Job said, that which I feared has greatly come upon me. Job chapter two, when they got in a tight spot, first thing his wife said was, why don't you curse God and die? Between his fear and her ungodly advice, yeah, it's a wonder he lasted as long as he did. And God didn't have anything to do with it except speaking faith over him. Called him the greatest man in the East when he knew he was in fear. When he knew his wife was liable to tell him to curse God and die. And see, the devil didn't know that he was um, not, he didn't, the devil didn't know he was in fear. God, who can't lie, had to reveal it to him. He said, actually, all that he has is in, is in your power. You know, the devil's like, oh, oh. I thought there was a hedge around him. And the Lord's like, no, silly. He's actually stepped into your territory, but you're too stupid to know it. But the Lord's like, I'm going to speak faith over him, and my word's going to go over him and change him and come to pass and pull him up where he needs to be. Double what he ever got, whatever he ever, whatever he, what he ever had. But it was a spiritual deal. It wasn't natural at all. Had Job not been afraid to lose everything, Job would never have lost anything. I'm going to say that again. If Job had not gotten into f afraid of losing everything, he never would have lost anything. In fact, we probably wouldn't even have a book of Job because you can find everything in Job's life in Proverbs. You know, all the good stuff. You find a little bit more creative juiciness in some of that stuff, especially chapter 29. But by and large, you get the wisdom of Job in the book of Proverbs. You see... But it, the reason we have the book of Job is so that you can see that fear is a spirit and it's sent to steal, kill, and destroy everything you are and everything you have. And so if you think your prosperity is tied to just the job you have, the connections you make, your bright smile, you're sadly mistaken because Paul tells us that our weapons are not human. Our weapons are spiritual. Notice he says, 
that um, they are weapons that are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but are mighty before God. You know, love, maturing, perfecting, growing love casts out fear. See, that's a mighty weapon. Love is a mighty weapon. Love will keep you centered when the devil's trying to pull you off. The love that God has for you will cause you to take hold of yourself and say, we ain't losing nothing. I don't believe that. That old lying devil. I don't believe him. No way. And that devil will have to leave. In fact, the Bible says he will run off as if he's in total fear of being caught and made captive. That's what James says. That's what Peter says. When you say, devil, I don't believe you. Shut up. That's submitting to God. That's resisting the devil. And he's got to flee. I don't believe that we're going broke. I don't believe that for a minute. I don't believe we're going to be laid on that bill. I don't believe that. You don't know how huge that is. Especially because you're not just thinking it, but you're speaking it. Because you can't outthink demons. You outspeak demons. Trying to outthink a demon is to fight a spiritual battle in the mental realm. Spiritual battles are fought with words and deeds and actions, not just thoughts. Now, it starts as a thought, but it's got to become a, it's got to grab a voice and become a word. I'm going to say that again. Winning the spiritual battle will start with a thought, but that thought's got to grow a voice. And then that voice needs to grow legs, which is putting feet to your faith or feet to your voice. Man, that's a real revelation for somebody right there. He says, so they, our weapons are mighty to God, uh, mighty before God for the overthrow. That, that doesn't sound like a passive thing. Well, who are you overthrowing? Uh, destruction of strongholds, uh, arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. So there's going to be an overthrow in your mind where you throw over poverty thinking, lack thinking, fearful thinking, worrisome thinking. Yeah, you're going to have to, you're going to have to go overthrow the thoughts in your mind that will not look at the birds and say, does he not take care of them? The, the, he's going to have to overthrow. You're going to have to overthrow with the word of God why you, that you won't look at the dandelions and say, man, look how pretty they are. And they don't do anything but just exist. They don't work. They don't sow. And look how God takes care of them. In fact, they ain't even here but for a minute. And then here they come again. Look at the investment that God makes in something that doesn't work and doesn't sow. Come on now. How much more valuable than a bird or a flower are you and I? You're going to have to have that war. And friend, God's words are, are soldiers. And the Bible says, labor to enter into the rest of faith. Faith comes by hearing the word. Labor to enter into the rest of the word of God. Labor to enter the rest that the word of God brings you. This word rest is colonize. Labor to colonize your fears, worries, doubts, concerns, shortages, and lacks with God's soldiers. And that's the words from the Bible that promise you wealth increase, the head, not the tail, taught to profit, pleasure in your prosperity. Come on now. Power to get wealth to establish his gospel. We're not going broke. We got to fund the gospel. God would never let gospel funders go broke. Who's going to finance his work? Come on now, you need to start thinking like that. You need to start seeing that. It'll seem kind of illegal at first, like every other time in life we went under right here. Every other person I know faces this, they go under. Well, you're going to be the exception. Here's one time where you can be the exception. Everybody wants to be an exception, you know. Well, I believed in healing, but. No, they ain't no buts. You either did or you didn't. See, but now it's where you be the exception. Every, David said, a thousand fall at my side and 10,000 at my right, but it what? It won't come near me. So you're going to have to overthrow some things in your mind, some thoughts in your heart, some choices and patterns that you have in your life. You're going to have to have a war. And the war is a spiritual war where you capture thoughts. And he says, I lead them, cap I lead them captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. I'm going to leave you with that. Father, I thank you for this awesome opportunity to share your word in this beautiful, beautiful place. 
Lord, I pray for a good understanding of everyone listening. I pray this word grow up and bear fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold, that which is sown in their hearts. I pray they not only hear it, but they do it. And we claim that in Jesus' name, amen.